So you decided to risk it for a biscuit and take a trip to Ireland, a country so good half the population moved to Australia just so they could get a better view of it. Maybe you have a thing for geology and want to shift the promiscuous stone of Blarney. Maybe you want to visit our brothers up north and learn about some of the wonderful things that they helped make, such as the Titanic or Game of Thrones. Or maybe you're a thrill seeker looking to experience some extreme Irish sports, such as not having the slightest interest in GAA, hiding from the TV license man, or for the very brave, telling an Irish mammy that you had left the immersion on all night. Well, you've come to the right place. Welcome to the just about accurate guide to Ireland. Like in the lambs and the and the sheep to scunt. Count out the nice bit of money, right? If there's two things you can't go without mentioning when it comes to Ireland, it's the Catholic Church, who of course are best known for discouraging contraception, and on a completely unrelated note, are known to routinely beat and bright kids. But an even better known part of Irish culture is the infamous and idolised Irish farmer. Throughout the years, there's been many notable farmers gone down in Irish history books. There's the Irish farmer who helped avoid disaster in 2009 when the lads working on the large Hadron Collider at CERN inadvertently opened a black hole after one of them accidentally spilled his can into it. An Irish dairy farmer by the name of John John Ron Don Duan, named after his many fathers, was flown over immediately and managed to close it using nothing but a few yards of baling twine and a calf and jack. Or there was Salty Owen, a fair man who was given that nickname in his youth after he dropped a hand on a girl in a cinema, forgetting his hands were colded in salt from the popcorn, and subsequently torched a fanny offer, who had so much trouble getting time off work he wasn't even there for his own child's conception. Or the most worshipped of all by modern farmers, Wayne de Main Lane, who was a farmer who was so tight he refused to pay his own wages and later died of starvation. So if you're looking for a strapping turnip faced lad to whisk you away to his kingdom, a one arm tanned with some land, a bard with a yard, a fiend with a boreen, then look no further than your average irresistible Irish farmer. They'll afford you nothing less than glitz and glamour. It's a lifestyle of sucky calves, an irrational fearlessness in the face of one ton bulls, spuds for every meal, delicious probably E. coli laced raw milk, working 12 hours a day, six and a half days a week, and an incredible ability to always smell like cow cream and shite even after they've just showered. And if you think you'll be slogging through muddy fields in your brand new wellies then you've thought wrong because you'll be cruising through them fields in style in a jeep more battered than you'd be if you forget to have the supper on. So you're new to an Irish pub or you've just straight up forgotten what it's like due to a lockdown that's been as long and as painful as the fifth toss of the day. But upon entering one you might find certain things are quite peculiar or even alarming. So to help you get ready for your first Irish pub experience or to recondition you back in, let me run you down a list of things that at a glance seem strange but I assure you are commonplace in an Irish boozing house. The first thing you'll notice upon entering is a thick layer of spilt liquid all over the bar. This is normal. It's not that most bar men and women always fail to wipe down their bars in Ireland for some reason. Reason, so you'll dip your arm or shirt sleeve into it upon ordering your first drink, giving off the false illusion to people that at a glance you're already smashed, making you as attractive to women as a crooked two inch broccoli flavoured knob. No no no, it's actually because Irish bears are constructed from a type of wood called hard man wood that comes from a type of ash tree native to Ireland called an urlock tree. And given the Irish climate, even when the ash or look tree is cut down, it needs to be soaking wet in order to maintain its strength. There's a similar case to be found in pub bathrooms where bar owners will tactically use a thick layer of urine over the floor tiles as a protective barrier in case somebody has the audacity to piss on them. Another thing you may notice is the topic of conversations going on with the ladies. Women of Ireland going against the grain and coming to blows over who got the cheapest item of clothing that could all be summed up with this. Christian Louboutin platform peep toe heels, 324 euro. Victoria's Secret ultimate bombshell essential makeup, 150 euro. The look on your friend's face when you tell them you talked your man at the door down to 20 quid. Priceless. There's some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's travellers. Irish men, of course, tend to resign their judgmentalness for what another man is drinking. Is Connor drinking a WKD? I had no idea he was gay. But for all the differences, there are some similarities to be found. Nobody in both groups has a drink that matches the brand on the glass. All of them start a conversation with, Did you hear about? They all came here for just the one. And they all believe that a single pint of water before bed is more than enough to counter the hangover from 16 pints. But what of the couples, you might ask? They can be easily spotted by looking at the scatter of lone men standing around holding handbags, looking at their phone, or making small talk with strangers. At first glance, they don't seem like men that are in relationships. But rest assured, they are. The reason why you don't see his other half 
is because she has rounded up all her fellow females in order to use the bathroom. Now, obviously, like most men, I'm not 100% sure as to why a girl needs three friends in order to have a piss, much less understand why it takes 45 minutes. You'd think surely with all that extra help it'd actually lower the time. But then again, I've never tried walking on piss-soaked tiles and heels so high that they'll have me walking like a newly born giraffe once I've about five drinks in me, so what do I know? But do not feel sorry for the man, because all he has to do to retrieve his missus is go to the DJ and ask him to play her favourite song. And those ladies will come barreling towards the dance floor screaming, like you just bought them all a brand new Hoover. So armed with this knowledge, why not pop in and enjoy the atmosphere? And when the night finally draws to a close, why not join in in an ancient Irish ritual of fertility, which is performed in Irish pubs countrywide at closing time, wherein the barman or bouncer will do a lap of the pub and shout the following enchanted words. Right folks, are you right there? Time to go. And you respond by standing up, waiting till he passes, and then sitting back down. This ritual will ensure that you perform when you get home. I hadn't much a choice in the matter, but sure. It's a I cold, it's a cold journey to school this morning. Oh good, you wouldn't belong getting frost, but... One thing you might notice about Ireland's lovely little teddy bear shape is that in some maps you'll find it missing part of his head, and it's actually not one country, but two. Don't worry, this is something we've noticed ourselves. You've got the Republic of Ireland being a fully fledged sovereign nation, and Northern Ireland being part of the UK. And to understand why, well like most relationships, it's complicated. So let me give you the quick gist. So Ireland was once a bit of a loud, irresponsible young girl, partying all the time, always fighting with the family, and just floated through life never really having any goals to chase. One night after a mad session, Ireland woke up the next morning to find herself under the neighbour's blanket. And unfortunately, she was the little spoon. It turned out that the UK had taken advantage of Ireland in her disorderly state, and they had married the previous night. Ireland now found herself in a relationship with the UK. Now, she didn't remember much about the previous night, but she did know one thing, and that was that she didn't give consent. She did know, however, that the UK was a little bit of a scallywag, and had a bit of a reputation for invading other girls left and right. So as you'd imagine, Ireland didn't really feel particularly good about this one-sided relationship. Now, the UK could certainly sense Ireland's apprehension about the whole thing. He could see the troubles in her eyes, so to speak. But the UK felt rather strongly about keeping Ireland from running away. So the UK attempted to trap poor little Ireland in the relationship by not pulling out and leaving a deposit of UK sympathisers all over Ireland's lovely hair. It wasn't long before Ireland fell pregnant, and little Northern Ireland was born. But unfortunately for the UK, this had the opposite effect in keeping Ireland sweet. And even though Ireland loved little Northern Ireland very much, Ireland wanted nothing more but to end the relationship and be a strong, independent woman. So our after the odd disagreement, it wasn't long before Ireland filed for divorce. Of course, Ireland being such a young girl, not really having her life together, and the UK being able to hire much better solicitors, the UK was able to keep full custody of little Northern Ireland, only allowing Ireland visitation rights. Unless, of course, the day comes when Northern Ireland decides it wants to move home. The divorce was finalised on a particularly nice Friday, and since then, Ireland and the UK have kept things civil for the sake of little Northern Ireland. There was some faffing about in recent years concerning the visitation rights as the UK decided to be awkward and leave our hometown to move away. In the an arrangement was made to keep the peace. But time heals all wounds, and given how long it's been and how much both countries have matured over the years, both of them often think that uniting and moving in together would make more sense, reconnecting the lands and finally becoming the ultimate crack centre of the world. But if for no other reason, be it just so I know what map to use for these videos. So there you go, another guide to Ireland video that's as reliable as an Aldi Johnny. In our next instalment we'll be discussing the inexplicable snubbing of the Father Ted team when choosing the Irish National Anthem, why that girl in your local deli is so stingy with the mayo in your chicken fillet roll, and why tractor drivers won't get out of the fucking way! So subscribe so you don't miss out. Anyway, good luck.